Welcome to Christian Worship in God's House at St. John's. We gather together on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost and join in Divine Service Setting 1. It begins for us on page 151 of our hymnals, or you may follow along in your service folder. We stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our intro, it is printed in our service folder. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The collect of the day is printed in our service folder. O oh God, your almighty power is made known chiefly in showing mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we may be called to repentance and made partakers of your heavenly treasures. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The Old Testament reading appointed for this seventh Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in the second chapter of the prophet Ezekiel. He said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to nations of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants also are impudent and stubborn. I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. This is the word of the Lord. We speak responsibly the gradual as printed in our worship folder. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. For from him and through him and to him are all things. The epistle reading is recorded in the 12th chapter of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians in the New Testament. I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So, to keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the singing of the Alleluia and the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Jesus went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter? the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own town and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages teaching. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet 
as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. This is the gospel of the Lord. We join together in the common confession of our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed printed for us on page 158 or the inside back cover of our hymnals. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We sing as our hymn of the day, hymn 583, God Has Spoken by His Prophets, hymn 583.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our risen and living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our sermon meditation is the second paragraph of our gospel reading from Mark chapter 6. It is summer family trip time. It's after the baseball season for most of the kids, and there's still a few weeks left before school starts. But packing for such a trip can be tough. You, need, you take all that you need for that vacation, but not so much that it doesn't fit into your vehicle. And you must remember to put the kids in the car. Don't leave them standing in the driveway. It seems like we always would forget something only to remember it after we were five miles down the road. So it got to the point in our family where we would sit in the van for 10 minutes before leaving the driveway in order to give us the time we needed to remember what it was that we had forgotten to pack. The trip that Jesus sends his disciples on in our text was much simpler, at least as far as the packing for it goes. Take the walking stick, sandals, the shirt that's on your back, and that's it. You are good to go, Jesus says to them. Jesus calls and Jesus sends. Jesus calls us to himself for the purpose of sending us out to others. Jesus sends us out with his life-giving message and with his divine authority. Jesus calls us to himself as his disciples. He does so in the water and the word of our holy baptism. In this sacrament, Jesus claims us as his very own. He names us as his chosen ones, and he promises us life with him, both now and forever. But by means of this very same gift, Jesus sends us out into the world as his messengers and his missionaries. You might think to yourself, I can't do that. And so we have our own Mount Sinai burning bush experience. And we join with Moses in, our many, uh, in his many objections to this mission. No, it's true, we can't do this. But Jesus can, and he does equip us with what we need to be his ambassadors in this foreign land, the world in which we live. He gives to us authority over evil spirits, for that is the power of his word, the Holy Bible, which drives Satan away. He gives to us the authority of forgiveness, which washes away our sins. I like to call what Jesus does with his disciples here is that he is sending them out on their vicarage internship. It will be a temporary experience of preaching that will prepare them for their later permanent ministry to the world after Jesus ascends into heaven. Well, obviously, Jesus' instructions to the twelve in our text were not meant to be followed by preachers of all times. But his reasons for these instructions still ring true. God's mission is urgent, and we need to reach as many people as possible. But the carriers of God's word cannot be burdened by the things of this world. They rely upon the hospitality of the people they serve to supply their material needs. They are not to go from one place to another just to get better accommodations. Those 12 then, and we today, have all that we need in the message that Jesus gives us to preach. And that message begins with the word, repent. We who hear Je the words Jesus has given us need to turn away from our sins and to live our lives according to God's will for us. Jesus instructs us to drive out demons. And we see from the Gospels the many times that Jesus came across evil spirits that inhabited and controlled people's lives. What is it that controls the lives of people today for their harm? Addictions, fear, hatred, greed, lust, jealousy. 
Jesus' disciples anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. This earthly element served as a symbol of the Holy Spirit's presence. Illnesses and handicaps are the results of life lived in a world that is in sinful rebellion against its Creator. The physical healing that God grants us is a preview of that complete restoration to life that Jesus will give to our bodies in the resurrection of the dead. Jesus' instructions of our text are simple enough, but the world around us is not satisfied with the simple. We expect flashy and we demand the dynamic. So also is the case with church bodies and individual congregations, which think that the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ is just not enough anymore. Jesus Christ and him crucified is no longer the good news to share with others. Instead, it is old news. People have heard enough of that. They think that it is time for us to move on from there. They don't want to proclaim God's law against our sin. That turns people off, and it won't fill up the pews or the offering plates. Such church bodies and congregations feel that they have, they have to add something to the ministry that Jesus has entrusted to us. Some of them become social activists, defending the latest disadvantaged group of people against the oppressive powers of this world. Others decide that Jesus' message has to be spiced up. It has to be jazzed up. It has to be pumped up with a praise band and high-tech audio visuals in order to turn a time of worshiping the Almighty God into an emotionally uplifting personal experience. If only we would add something exciting to Jesus' message, then we will get more people to believe in him. The staff, the sandals, the tunic, the basics of Jesus' word, the law that shows us our sin, the gospel that shows us our Savior, all of that is thought to be just not enough anymore. We no longer are satisfied with what Jesus has given us. We feel that we have to add to it with something of ourselves. But when that happens, what Jesus has given to us gets lost, and his good news for us takes a back seat to our good intentions. But pastor, there are people that we must reach in any way that we can, whatever it takes. And yes, there are. The mission is urgent. But simply reaching them does not mean that we have given them what they need if we don't share Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior with them. An increase in the number of cars in the lot and people in the pews does not mean that we have done our job. We see in our text that Jesus prepared his followers for failure. He included in his instructions the likelihood that people would reject his missionaries and the message they proclaimed. He says, if a place doesn't welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave. That would be a sign of God's judgment upon them. Jesus did not call his 12 disciples to be successful missionaries, to grow large churches with big buildings and television ministries. Jesus called them then and he calls us today to be faithful to him and to his message. This is the simple good news of our salvation. By Jesus' life lived perfectly for us. By his death upon the cross, died sacrificially in our place. And by his victory over the grave, won eternally for us. When that message is welcomed by those who hear it through us, when the Holy Spirit works faith in them to believe in Jesus, we know that it was not our methods or our manipulation that made it happen. But it was the simple message that Jesus has given us to share, that he is the Son of God and our Savior from sin. Jesus calls us, Jesus sends us, Jesus equips us, and Jesus works through us. If we think that we have to add to what Jesus has given us to preach, 
we actually are subtracting from all that he has done for us. What we have to take with us as missionaries of Jesus in our daily lives and as a congregation gathered by him is what he has given us to share with others. That is his word of salvation written for us in the Holy Bible. That is his gift of faith offered to us in the water and word of our holy baptism. And it is his body and blood for our forgiveness present for us here in this Lord's Supper. To God alone be all of the glory. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in our Lord and in our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we welcome forward our worship offerings, we join together in the singing of the offertory as it is printed for us in our service folder. In our prayer of the church, we remember those listed for us under healing and comfort. We give thanks to God for those who serve us in our nation's military and as emergency personnel. We do pray for favorable weather for farming and safety in the fields this week. We give thanks for our nation's freedom, liberty, and independence. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We stand as we join in the prayer of the church. We bless you, Lord, for you have heard the voice of our pleas for mercy and sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our strength and shield. Save your people and bless your heritage forever. Send laborers into your harvest, Lord. Preserve your ministers among us devoted to your word and to prayer. Give many servants to your church that neither the preaching nor the care of your people may fall into neglect or disregard. Provide for the ministry of St. John's as our congregation soon will enter into a pastoral vacancy. Lord, in your mercy, gracious Lord, you have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations, that is, Christ Jesus, your holy arm. By his death and resurrection, you have worked salvation. Strengthen the song of your church. Give skill to musicians, poets, and artists. Give boldness to your congregation in this and every place to sing the eternally new song of Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, O Lord, you are the giver of all our freedom and liberty. We thank you for those blessings that we enjoy in this great nation. We pray that you would continue to protect our country and its citizens. We pray that you would establish us in your truth that marches on into our world through your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, protect and defend our nation from its enemies. Support our elected and appointed government leaders and preserve them from temptation, error, and harm. Through the work of all civil authorities, you enable us to live a quiet and peaceable life according to your word. Bless our nation's military members, law enforcement officers, emergency responders, and health care professionals with safety and success in the exercise of their duties in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Father, in our weaknesses, we are strong for the sake of Christ, whose grace is sufficient for every need. Give comfort to those whose pain is chronic, whose suffering is unknown, who wrestle with difficult thorns in body or mind, or who are tempted to despair. We pray on behalf of Mary, Donald, Roger, Christine, Ruth, Pastor Cohen, Julie, Jay, Susie, Marcy, Beth, Riley, Ashlyn, Gerald, Tyson, Mary, Ted, Richard, Ron, and those we name in our hearts. In weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities, let us boast in Christ and his cross, by which we and our sufferings are holy in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, 
Bountiful God, out of your abundant blessing, you satisfy us with Christ, the bread of life. We thank you for providing the bounty of a harvest completed and the promise of a crop to be gathered in the fall. We trust that you will provide success and safety for those who work the land and tend the livestock in your name and for your glory. Lord, in your mercy, Give repentance and faith to all who commune this day, that finding refuge in your Son's true body and blood, we may taste and see that you are good. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. It begins for us on page 160 of our hymnals, the service of the sacrament, page 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
The peace of the Lord be with you always.